Okay, so the first idea that comes to mind is that, uh, remember a few slides ago when we talked about half, when we first introduced the half-wave rectifiers, we looked at this circuit and we looked at this circuit, right? And we saw that for this circuit, the first one on the left, uh, it's only basically rectifying the positive half cycle. So my V out here is going to look like this, right? And then we saw that, well, for the opposite of the circuit, if I reverse the diode's direction, I'm going to get something like this. So only the negative half cycle of my input is going to appear at the output. Okay, so one might think that, well, let's combine these two so that I get the best of both half cycles, right? So basically, if I do it like this, putting the two diodes in a form that uh, it's known as like anti-parallel, uh, meaning that they're in parallel but with different directions, right? So if I have this structure, I'm hoping to get a fully rectified output. But what happens in reality is that if this is V in and this is V out, for the first half cycle, this diode is active uh, or on and the bottom diode is off, I'm going to get this half cycle. And the, for the second half cycle, for the negative half cycle, well, let's call it D1 and D2. D2 is on, D1 is off. I'm going to get this. So yes, indeed, the circuit passes on V in to V out for both half cycles, but it doesn't do any kind of rectification. It doesn't rectify. What I really like to get was a positive half, like basically a positive half cycle for the positive half cycle and another positive half cycle for the negative, and then continue this all the way to the end. Right, so this is what, what what I was hoping to get, but what in reality what I get is just the sinusoidal. So this was pretty much useless, right? And like if you think about it, this sinusoidal is not really uh, as good as my V in because well I have had a 0.7 drop um, on the peak of the sinusoidal. So instead of going from plus five to minus five, for example, I'm going from uh, plus 4.3 to negative point uh, 4.3. Okay. So now let's look at the second idea, which is the one that works, okay? And uh, let's actually look at the, it, it, it has two parts. This circuit that I'm going to describe has two parts. So let's, let's call this part one. And let's call this part two. And each of them is taking care of one half cycle. Let's actually talk about part two first because it's more straightforward and it's something that we know. So for part two, I know that if I have a sinusoidal V in, my V out is going to look like this. Why? Because, well, these two diodes, so when D3 and D4 are on, so during the positive half cycle, during positive half cycle, I know that the D3 and D4 are on therefore uh, i'm going to have basically a v out that is basically similar to the positive half cycle of course with two 0 0.7 drops right because uh, i have a 0 0.7 when they're on i'm going to have a 0 0.7 here and i'm going to have a 0 0.7 there so here i'm going to have uh, basically v out is going to be v peak of the input so this is V peak of the V in minus two times V D on. So if it's a five volts, I'm going to get somewhere around 3.6 volts as the peak. But I got my waveform rectified. That's what is important, right? And during the negative half cycle, well, I don't have any current. I cannot have any current flowing in this direction. Therefore, because it's, it's reverse uh, current for both diodes. Therefore, I'm going to have both my diodes off. Uh, so during negative half cycle, D3 and D4 are off. Okay. Now let's go back to part one and see what happens there. So first I'm going to define some Vx here, which has the polarity that is opposite of V out. Okay. So now if I have this V in, a simple sinusoidal, how does my Vx look like? 
my vx is going to look like this. So for the positive half cycle, it's going to be just zero. And for the negative half cycle, it's just going to be that negative half cycle that is a little bit attenuated. So this is, let's say, negative 3.6-ish. Okay, so 5 minus 2 times 0 0.7. Now, this is my vx, but I've defined my v out with the, pos with the opposite polarity. Therefore, I can say that my v out is going to look like this. And again, this is 3.6. So in a sense, even for the negative half cycle, I got a positive half cycle at the output, right? You might think, well, it's a little bit of cheating because, well, yeah, I know you can you can look at this voltage with this polarity that you just defined here, negative on the top, positive on the bottom, but how are you going to connect these two circuits together to get a full wave rectifier? Because you cannot say that for the negative half cycle, I'm going to have the V out defined this way, and for the positive half cycle, I'm going to define V out that way. Right, this is kind of like cheating because you just change the polarity. I could have changed the polarity even for this circuit. So for half of the time, I'm going to say V out is like this. For the other half of the time, I'm just going to say here's negative, here's positive. Right. Well, the thing is, I can actually change this circuit that I'm showing here to this circuit. I basically took the circuit from this point and this point and I twisted uh, the circuit to, to make it look like the, the one on the bottom, right? Now, the way it works is that, again, if I have the sinusoidal, what happens is that now the, the diode D1 is connected to, this R, the, to the top of RL, and the diode D2 is connected to the bottom of RL. Now I can have a V out with a similar polarity as this circuit, so positive on the top and negative on the bottom. And this way, whenever I have a negative half cycle, I'm going to have some current flowing in this direction. The current comes here. I'm going to have some current here and then coming back in this direction back to the VN, right? So whenever I have a negative half cycle, I'm going to have some current, which is going to cause this current that is I just drew its direction is going to cause a positive voltage across the V out with this polarity because it's flowing in this way and we know that the voltage across the resistor is from positive to negative right so I'm gonna have some positive voltage across the resistor with the polarity that I like right so this is gonna cause a V out that is similar to the V out that I had before but this with this little twist that I made uh, I made sure that my V out is basically having a positive kind of a bump when, when my input is in the negative half cycle, okay? So we're going to continue uh, in the next slide. We're going to continue and connect these two circuits together to make a full wave rectifier, okay? So here's how I connect the two parts of that rectifier together. So uh, just to basically relate these circuits to the previous slide, this is D3, this is D4, this is D1, and this is D2. You can see that now I have RL connected at the output and the V out is across the RL and this is how my V out is going to look like. So this is for the positive half cycle and the second one is for the negative half cycle. Another way to draw this circuit is actually like this. So basically I'm bas observing here that the, pos the top part of RL or one terminal of RL is connected to the cathode of D3 and cathode of D1, right? So that's basically this terminal. And then the other terminal is connected to the anode of D4 and anode of D2. So this is the other terminal. Okay. So I'm going to call this uh, the full wave rectifier. Basically, these two circuits are equivalent of each other. I just basically redrew it in a way that it looks nicer. So we have V in here. And we have... Two, uh, four diodes, two on the top, two on the bottom, with the direction that is shown. And we can get V out from here, okay? And uh, section C and D of this picture in this slide is actually showing uh, the direction of current in two different half cycles. So during the positive half cycle of Vn, we have current flowing through D3 and then the resistor and D4. 
and during the negative half cycle we have current from d1 to the resistor and d2 right what is the most important thing that i want you guys to actually note here is that in both cases the current is always flowing from right to left in the resistor and that is why the polarity of v out is always positive if i define it this way right so no matter what is the polarity of v in the current we, we made this circuit in a way that the current in the resistor in the load resistor is actually always from right to left therefore causing a polarity a positive voltage with this polarity okay i hope this was very clear so from the input output characteristics my full wave rectifier looks like this so it's kind of like connecting the two sides of half it's connecting two half or half wave rectifier v out v in characteristics and these dead zones are because of the uh these are because of the tertial voltage of, of the diode so you see that i have two vd on or for example 1.4 volts here and a negative 1.4 volts there therefore you can see that the, the sinusoidal is not like a perfect sinusoidal at the output it has these dead zones between them but at the end of the day this is much better almost twice as better as a half wave rectifier in terms of ripple so like imagine that if i had a half wave rectifier i would have had a ripple all the way to here now i only have up to here and then i go back up right so this is why i get less ripple with full wave rectifiers so this is showing the almost complete picture so we have this uh full wave rectifier again instead of connecting the rl between this these two nodes i'm still connecting the rl there but then just to make it look like the the, the circuits that we discussed before with the capacitor and the resistor uh, i'm connecting the rl between here and this node but then well in this format so i have the rl and i have the c1 and you can imagine that well c1 was the capacitor that we used to kind of like uh, flatten the output and rl was representing the load of the circuit that we're connecting to such as the cell phone and you can see that my ripple is now uh, much smaller than before so if i had a half wave rectifier this discharge would have continued all the way to here and then i would have got well actually here and then i would have got some charging right so this is basically instead of having this much ripple now i have only this much ripple and that's written here so since c1 only gets half of period to discharge uh, ripple voltage is decreased by a factor of two okay now even if the ripple that we have created up to now is not good enough what we can do is that we can actually use the regulator voltage that we discussed in the beginning of this lecture with uh, for example three diodes that we have here to make the ripple much smaller remember that uh, with the regulator voltage if you had like i don't know a ripple of 100 millivolts it would have uh, translated that into somewhere around 11 to 12 millivolts of variations right so if somehow with a full wave rectifier and careful selection of this capacitor uh, you made this ripple like you reduced it to like i don't know 10 millivolts or so then you can make sure that the voltage that is going to your cell phone is as accurate it's a perfect dc with a well fluctuations in the order of like one millivolt or something like that which is pretty good okay so this r1 is the 100 ohms that so this is not the load resistor don't confuse it with the load resistor is it's the 100 ohms that we show in the uh in the first slide when we were discussing the, the regulator and this load is your let's say your cell phone so this is basically uh your whatever rl that you want to uh imagine okay so we went all the way from let's say this is your input sinusoidal signal that is coming from your uh well power lines uh, you have always you have some sort of a transformer you're going to learn more about this in the power systems but you're going to convert it from a high voltage ac to a low voltage ac let's say that you had 480 volts here you convert it to 120 volts here and then this is the full wave rectifier sometimes it's called diode bridge so this is your full wave rectifier and then well you have the capacitor to get a flat dc output and then after that you have a regulator so this is a full chain from all the way from your basically the transformer from like basically uh, from the, from the uh, power lines uh, systems in the city uh, this is your outlet and all the way to your uh, cell phone or whatever other electronic device you can imagine 